Now you all know Dr. Mike Simonson. He's worked very, very close with, with, um, with the college and of course with, with Cape, as some of you may know. And um, uh, Dr. Simonson, thanks again for, um, for hosting this and I appreciate it and uh, you'll take it away. Great, thank you very much. Uh, and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Mike Simonson. Some of you know me, some of you may not. I, I've been around here 20 years. I've been a professor for 44 years. I'm assuming you're seeing top 10 tips. Okay, I'm seeing it too. That's the other reason I brought in two uh, computers so that I could see what you were seeing. I, we're going to talk about these Canvas ideas. Again, maybe because this won't be as pressing for you in the next several weeks. But these are some ideas that I've learned. Nobody told me about. I think that's one of the subheadings for this that we talked about. Uh, what, what I discovered on my own and nobody told me. You in the health professions, College of Healthcare Sciences especially, are lucky because you have some instructional design helpers. Most of the rest of the university no longer has instructional design assistants, or at least not to the same uh, level that we used to have. Remember iZone? Um, that's why I asked Dr. Seeperset to join us because she is, as I, as I said, uh, one of the premier instructional designers that I've ever had to, uh, opportunity to work with. So she's going to eavesdrop and, and uh, join in uh, a little later in our session today. Uh, the agenda is I'm going to go through the tips and then I'm going to give examples. I'm going to say what the tips are. I'm going to maybe explain them a little bit. The handout that you should be receiving via email lists those tips too. So you can take notes or you can just look at them and it will help clarify some of the things I'm talking about. Let's go to the next slide. Here are the 10 tips, but let's come back to that in a second. Here are some resources that you might want to explore after we're done. Um, NSU has put out a guide to working remotely cheat sheet, and it's not too bad. It's got some, in some interesting information about how you set up your home office and some other things like that. Uh, there is now a learning and education center at NSU. A lot of people don't know that. It's headed by the uh, interim provost and has uh, at least some resources, uh, if not people, that are available to help you as you use the technologies that we'll, we're going to need to use when we work at a distance. Um, how you set up your Zoom account, if you have not done that yet, zoom.nova.edu, you log into that and you type in your NSU credentials and you will grant, be granted this uh, wonderful Zoom license where you can have conferences up to 300 people uh, for as long as you want, including let them run all day. I encourage people when using Zoom to log in and play with it. Uh, send an email message to a friend in Keokuk, Iowa. Does anybody have friends in Keokuk, Iowa besides me? Uh, and, and talk to them. That's how you become proficient at it. At it. And, and I asked and I found out that, that while an NS user has to originate, you can talk to other people too. That's how you become more proficient at it. There's Zoom tutorials. Um, uh, there's a presentation I, uh, that are quite good that are produced by Zoom. Um, here's the Vimeo li link for the setting up a new online, online course workshop that I did yesterday and a Zoom orientation I did two days ago. And uh, if you have problems with Zoom or with Canvas, you're all supposed to know we set up, you use the NSU Service Manager. And then the, ca the Canvas help number. The people at Canvas are quite good. They tend to answer within three rings and they really are able to solve over the telephone most of the problems that uh, you might have. Um, let's stop sharing for a second. Is that what you all thought you were going to be learning about this hour? Give me some thumbs up, virtually or physically. Is that is that kind of what you what you thought you signed in for? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. Um, and some th ah, good. You're using all these thumbs up. Let's go back. Yes. To thank you. Again. Thank you. Um, and let's go back on my PowerPoint. Top ten tips. If I. Well, Top 10 tips. Let me talk about each one of these for a minute and then we'll go into uh, my can one of my Canvas courses and we'll show you some examples. The, the linchpin, the key to any course we all know, but especially to an online course is the course syllabus. Your syllabus 
is the repository of all the critical information for your course. I can't encourage enough for you to look at your syllabus and add to it, add more resources to it, add more information to it, because it is the one thing that every student in your class ought to have, and they ought to refer to it regularly. Now, obviously, these are stored in Canvas, can be stored in Canvas, but I also would encourage you to tell your students to download a physical copy of it so they always have it that they can refer to. Um, and, and, and Oh, and by the way, you probably may be wondering if you're like, what is BC, YC, and uh, BC again? I don't know. I think I made a mistake there. But before Canvas, your Canvas, and then after Canvas. So the last two BCs ought to be ACs. Let's escape. And let me fix those right now. Are you still seeing my screen? Yeah, you are. Isn't this fun? I did this on purpose, by the way, so you can see me correctly. All right. Uh, next, welcomes. One of the easiest way to humanize a course is to have regular welcomes from you to your students. Obviously, that means a course welcome, something at the beginning of the term or beginning of the semester. But I also recommend that for every module in your course, every subdivision of the content of the course, you also create a welcome. Now the welcome can be in writing, like an email or a posted note. It can be an audio recording that you make and uplink or, or upload and post. It can also be a video. And I'm gonna show you some examples of all three. The next uh, before your class is organize your class around something called the unit module topic approach. There's been a lot of research conducted that says one of the least effective ways to organize a course is around, around time. In other words, lectures, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday lectures. Now, when you're teaching in a face-to-face -face environment, most of us structure our classes. You know you've got 15 weeks. You've got a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday lecture at 11 o'clock that goes to 11.50. And so you know you've got 45 presentations or lectures that you have to give. So you drop content into each one of those. Well, you can also use that same approach when you're designing an online course, but when you get into a, a robust course management system like Canvas or Blackboard or others that, that you may have used or will use in the future, it makes more sense to organize your course around something that isn't designated by time. What happens, for example, when school closes for a week, as it did for all of us last week? Um, then you have to adjust the time. Well, it makes more sense to say we're not going to really look at module four this week. We're going to wait and use look at module four when classes resume. Anyway, I'll, I'll show some examples of that. Dashboards. How you make your dashboard personalized. That's the, when you pop up and you list all the courses that you're seeing. How do you actually get the courses to show on the dashboard? The banner across the top. Isn't that wonderful picture in the default banner of Canvas? of the library. That's kind of a nifty picture, but you know, everybody uses that. So we're going to look at how you can, uh, the possibility of you creating your own banner that's unique to your course. Navigation, how you move through, how someone moves through Canvas. We're going to talk about that a little bit and how, including how you might add the Zoom tab so that you have Zoom replacing go to meeting. Uh, the MMMs, this is not a extra large candy, rather it's MMM stand for what I think is one of the most effective ways to stay in touch with your students on a regular basis, the Monday morning memo. Every Monday you send out a, a memorandum, email, posted, audio recording, video recording even, to your students summarizing what should have been accomplished the previous week, identifying, oh, that's what happens when you have a cell phone that's on. I just turned it off. Um, sorry about that. Um, now I need to go back to, oh, okay, good. Um, phone rings. There, we're back. Uh, the MMM, or Monday Morning Memos, as I said, summarizes the previous week's 
content or activities, assignments that are due and should have been submitted, and orients the student to what's coming up for the next week. Obviously, you can do that within Canvas and you can do that automatically, but the Monday morning memo puts you back in the picture where you tell them, this is what we did and this is what we should be doing. Um, your course then, uh, grades, we're going to take a look at the grade book a little bit, and here's where maybe Dr. Seferset could help me out because I'm not very good at doing other than manually entering grades. Uh, common modules are some things that you might want to share across courses, and then how you save the course you've created. How you take the Canvas course and save it so that you have access to it in the future. Okay, let's stop sharing again. And let's come back. Now, Dr. Seeper said, is that what I said we were gonna talk about when I at told you these were the ideas that I was gonna share with people? Yes. <laughs> Very good. You just check in to see that I'm still here. Yeah, I, 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 was, I knew you would, well, I, I don't know who's going to be there. Thank you. I, I, uh, uh, some people use these tabs, by the way, to say everybody has to have a camera so I can see you and I make sure that you are still there and you haven't just logged in with your wonderful picture, Joanne or Elizabeth or Rick, and you're not really sitting behind the picture in a live camera. So some instructors who are more traditionalists want to be able to see their students all the time. So there you are, Elizabeth. I knew you were there. Uh, let's share the screen again. And let's look at some examples now. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sharing the wrong scheme. Give me a second. Uh, this, I'm, I'm like a, a one-armed piano player here. A one-armed uh, band, if you would. Uh, got all these buttons to push. Okay. This screen shows my dashboard for the courses that I'm teaching this semester. And I'm, I'm, we're going to look at them and uh, talk about some of these ideas on this top 10 tips and how how at least I am practicing them. Notice again the dashboard. Um, most of us have figured out how to change the color in the dashboard. That's pretty straightforward. But you can also change the image that is in the dashboard. In other words, this gives you a chance to personalize your course, such as in the Instructional Technology and Distance Education program that I, I teach in. We have a logo and I like to put that on our courses so that that logo then tells students who may be taking courses in other programs that that's the ITDE course. Some people like to use a color code per semester. Some people like to change the color code for each of the tabs, each of the, uh, what, are, what are these called um, generically, Dr. Seifer said, these little boxes, are they, do they have a name? Flashcards. Flashcards. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, your little flashcards here. Um, but let's take a look at one of the courses now and see how it's organized, or at least how I've organized it. Um, notice also the banner. I, I've changed the banners. And to change the banner, uh, let's maybe not go to one of the courses I'm actually teaching now. Let's go back to the dashboard and let's go back to my uh, demo courses. Each of you in Canvas has a demo course. And that demo course, once you call it up and you go over here to courses and you list all of your courses, and notice I've got quite a few, I supervise a group of adjuncts that have courses. These little, these little um, stars here, when you click on them, that will put the, that course in your dashboard. Let's just, uh, the art of teaching, uh, this is, and let's then go back to the dashboard and that art of, art of teaching class ought to show up somewhere in my dashboard because I just clicked on it. Yeah, there it is right there. Um, 
So I have a demo course that I have loaded the contents for a theories of learning course into it. And a matter of fact, I, I changed the uh, um, banner uh, so it isn't the theories of learning anymore. But to change the banner, all you need to do is click on the edit button. You can click here, you can delete it, and you can put some other icon in there from your file images over here. Let's see what other images we have. Well, let's, let's uh, see if it works. Okay, I put that, now that's not the image I want, but if I created an image, and you can do this in, um, in PowerPoint or Word, you can create an image and then save it as an, as, as a, as a, excuse me, as a, a JPEG file and pers personalize the banner for your courses in that way. Let's go back to this banner. Uh, now I've got them both up there. Okay, I need to delete this one first. And now I save. Let's look next at the modules for this demo course. I've said that the way to organize an online course in Canvas is not around weeks necessarily, although people do it and it works for them most of the time, but rather around units, modules, and topics. Generally, a three semester credit course will have two or three major subdivisions, units. And each unit, give or take, will have four or five modules. So a 16 week or a regular three semester credit course might have somewhere between five to 12 or 13 individual modules, which are subdivisions of the course. Some people say, well, how do I know what, what's a module or how do I organize a module? A simple way to do that is if you've got a good textbook that you're using in the course that you're teaching, the textbook is obviously in most cases divided into chapters. Well, usually textbook authors, the idea of a chapter is very closely related to a critical subdivision of that particular course, a module in other words. Now, a lot of textbooks will be divided into units also which are subcategories. And those units then can help you organize. And then as you become more sophisticated in teaching that class, let's say you've taught it three or four times, you, you may then to be able to develop your own organizational pattern. Topics are major single concepts within a module. So let's go back to this course. We're looking at it. I, I'm, we've been looking at it all along. And uh, the getting started tab, so, orientation to cameras, Canvas, I put this in all my courses because I still have some students that uh, are either fairly new or have not used a course management system very often. So this is a uh, orientations to Canvas that have uh, an orientation by Dr. Seeprasad and an orientation that I did. Hers is a complete and a good one. Mine's sort of frivolous and uh, not very comprehensive, but I've got them both in there. Uh, let's go back to the modules and let's scan down and take a look at how this course is organized. Uh, information about quizzes, module one, module two, module three, and you can see that in this course, Theories of Learning, there are 14 modules. Um, let's take a look at one of the modules, module seven, Nature of Knowing. It's divided into these three major topics, a reading, a nature of knowledge presentation, and that's information uh, that I've created or was created by one of the instructors. Uh, this is an articulate uh, lesson about this concept, the nature of knowing. And now let's go back. And once again, we'll go to module seven. Uh, here's another class session eight. So what I've done in this class is organize it around modules. Now we look more closely and in the syllabus the modules are organized into three units in this particular class and then within each of those modules I placed the content and that content then is what students study related to that topic 
that module of that course. Let's go back. Um, the banner navigation. Oh, here. Let's let's take a look for a second at how you organized your course um, and organize the tabs on the left hand side of of the course that you're teaching over here. Go to settings. And here's where you can change the, um, what's it called again? Flashcard, Dr. Seeper said, flashcard to make it whatever you've decided. You just edit it, download it in there. It's very easy. You can change the color. Here's where you choose the image. You change the color when it's on the dashboard itself. And then if you click on this tab here that says navigation, you can reorganize the tabs on the left-hand side. I like to, you know, we all want to start with the home page. I like to put modules first and maybe the official syllabus second and then assignments, quizzes, and other kinds of things. Um, let's disable Zoom uh, and let's get rid of go to training because we're not going to use that anymore. And as you scan down, you can see that there are a whole series of additional tabs that you can put along the left hand side uh, of your Canvas course. For example, Zoom resides there. I'd already uploaded it once. Uh, yesterday I showed this. So if you click here, enable, then Zoom will appear and you click save. Don't forget to click save. And then when you go back to the home page, Zoom now appears as one of the tabs on the left hand side. I don't know why I have new analytics here, but you could move Zoom up. Well, not here, but you could move Zoom up or put it wherever you want it. Um, Monday morning memos. Let's go back to, let's go to a different class. Let's go to my, my desktop, or, or excuse me, my dashboard, and let's go to the, one of the classes that I'm actually teaching this semester, Research and Instructional Technology and Distance Education. Most of the classes I teach are at the doctoral level. Um, and so here we've got the modules again. This particular class has the orientation to Canvas at the beginning, uh, the welcome from the instructor, and I talked about welcomes. Um, I have both a video introduction created. We'll take a look at just the very beginning of that. These are quick and dirty videos. These are not ones where you get Mark Chipnick to come over with his fancy cameras and produce it, but these are ones you produce with the the camera built into your came over uh, one of our textbooks <laughs> for the class this semester. Okay, that's enough of that. Huh? In here. Uh, all right, let's get out of there. And and there is also a welcome letter or a written introduction that students can download and it provides them with an overview of the course. Let's go back to modules again. The video introductions I think are best if they're not overly slick. Remember, you're, you're a professor or a teacher. You're not an on-camera talent. So you don't want to be too slick. They're going to think somebody came in and did all your work for you. You want them to communicate the idea and the cameras and the recording devices that are built into Kaltrua or Shark Media or right into Canvas are quite effective. Uh, if you want to use things that are a little more sophisticated, you can make a recording. As a matter of fact, I use Zoom to make many recordings. I use Zoom without an audience and just record, and then I'll use that, load it into um, Movie Maker or iMovie, depends on, how, depends on if I'm on my Mac or I'm on my PC, and I'll put a title on it, maybe a little music on it too. But if you don't want to be that sophisticated, you can just take that video and you can put it right into your, uh, into your Canvas course. Okay, and this is organized around beginning with the introductory module. And then here are the modules, units and modules for this course, the nature of research in the field. And note this note here, it says, the contents of modules will be opened according to the course calendar schedule. I do not open the entire contents of my Canvas course. I open it a week at a time according to the schedule that I send to every student, but as directed in the Monday morning memo that I send to students. So let's go back and look at some Monday morning memos. Here they are uh, for the 
for, for this class I'm teaching this semester. Um, and uh, down here where it says November, uh, those are the same Monday morning memos that I used last semester when I taught this. Now, obviously, you, when you save, and I'll show you that in a second, and upload, the Monday morning memos will be the ones that you use the semester where you uploaded from. But you can then, instead of having to create them from scratch, you can just edit them and update them to make them relevant for the current semester. Well, let's just look at what I said on February 10th. Oh, pretty short. I said, hello, this week we'll continue to study module three. Assignment 1A was due yesterday and 1B is due February 23rd. Well, you can read this as well as I. Be sure to follow guidelines closely. How many times can we say that? They never listen to us. Okay. So the Monday morning memo is both sent to students and it also is posted. And the little green uh, over here means whether or not a student can see it or not when they go to the student view. Let's go back to the student view, for example. Let's go back to home. Let's click on the student view. And that's what students see when they look at the course. I think most of you have probably discovered this already. So they're seeing only the Monday morning memos that have the little bit that I uh, opened to them. Notice the ones that, well, the one in November, I, I think I just clicked on that just now. But here's the modules and you can either allow them to see everything or you can, you can hide information. And I hide the information for upcoming modules. Sometimes I hide the information for previous modules just to not to confuse students, but generally you leave it open all the time. So students can go back and study. Uh, leave student view. Um, let's close that. And let's just take a look at uh, unit. Here's uh, class session, professional journals, reflections. I have students often do reflections on the class session. And then I will add in my assignments and says, or, or I'll, I'll attempt to explain in more detail some of the things that students have reflected on and maybe have been a little bit confusing to them. Okay, what was next on my list? Um, Grades. Okay. In the grade book, the grades will show up once you publish them in the assignment area. So here are what I have graded. It looks like I'm a pretty easy grader. I've got one F in there, mostly A's. I'll have to take a look at that. I shouldn't probably show the student names, but uh, uh, students can can uh, also then we'll go back and see their grades and those assignments that have not yet been assigned or submitted uh, will show up with this unpublished. Dr. Seifer said might want to say a little bit more about this. She's really a, a grade book expert in this whole area, but students then can also see where their, what their grades are to a certain point in terms of percentages. And in this class, assignments are 90% of the grade and discussions are 10%. And you can set that percentage. So that if you want your discussions to be 30%, you set it at 30%. And then Canvas automatically calculates for the overall percentage that a student has. I've got one student I probably need to talk to. I should probably be showing that in case somebody knows her. But she needs, she's at the, in the, the B range right now. Um, which is unheard of. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, common modules. Um, let's, let's go back to my dashboard for courses. And let's go to uh, one of the other courses that I have here, like my, uh, well, here's another demo course that I have. And, and that's what your course looks like when there's nothing there. You haven't loaded anything. Um, and on the, um, I'm going to publish it anyway. Uh, oh, let's cancel that. Uh, uh, import from Commons. There is something called the Common, what's the, what's the correct name? Where you can store modules that you want to use in more than one course 
and you can also access modules that others have created that are stored in the common area. Like here's a module on living and non-living things that someone as Michael Lortho has posted. Oh, so you can post your uh, favorites and uh, let me go to my favorites. I think I only have one and that is the orientations to canvas copy. That's the one that you've seen in several of the courses that I've shown you where I put it in every course, it's an orientation to Canvas. I suspect I should put um, maybe an orientation to Zoom in for students uh, in future courses, but I don't have to recreate it. I don't have to load it. It's in the common area. I, I put it in my favorite area. So all I have to do in my course is just click on this and it'll download automatically. Um, also, let's go back to uh, this demo course, and maybe let's go to a different one. And the last thing I said we were going to talk about is exporting and saving. So I've got a class here. Let's go back to this theories of learning class. And it's published. I go to settings. And on the right hand side, there is a tab that allows me to export the course. And what do you want to export? Well, I export the entire course and I do it at the end of every semester. And I save that exported course back to my desktop or the cloud. So I have it. Now, I don't know how College of Healthcare Sciences work, whether you have somebody who uploads your Canvas courses every semester and downloads them from the previous time, which is what a lot of colleges do. We have a person in the College of Education for a lot of our courses, especially those taught by adjuncts, who stores all of these copies of Canvas courses. And then when the course is taught again, they upload it. So the adjunct instructor only has to uh, go in and clean it up, maybe add their own welcome letter instead of the one that was there previously. And you can create the type you want. It's, it's fairly easy to do. You just follow. I wish, I'm going to wish I hadn't done that now because I'm actually exporting it. It may take a little bit of time. Um, and then that will be a, you'll get a notice in your email saying that your export is completed. Then you can go to that export and you then can download it to your desktop. Well, let's, let, let me go back to my PowerPoint. See if I've covered what I said I was going to cover. Anybody still there? Okay, we talked about uh, yes, the syllabus, are. the linchpin, critical importance, the use of welcome, video, audio, um, or written, the unit module topic as a way to organize your course. Uh, how you can change the dashboard. I guess it's what, what we now know is called the flashcard, uh, the banner across the top to personalize your course, how you can navigate and change the navigation, uh, the use of the concept of Monday morning memos to keep students on task, uh, the grade book, how you can enter grades. I didn't say much about that. Um, by the way, Zoom has outstanding, not Zoom, Canvas has outstanding tutorials. And then the idea of common modules that you want to save so that you can download them and put them into uh, multiple courses. And then how you can export a course once you've created it so you have it. It doesn't just reside in someone else's special cache of things so that you can um, then download it if you want or have access to it. You can download it if you want to play with it into your demo course area. If you don't have a demo course area, you need to look for it. But if you don't have one or you would like an additional one, all you have to do is contact Canvas and they'll give you an additional demo course. It's also sometimes called a sandbox, right? Dr. Seeper said. Um, okay, let's stop sharing. I've been talking way too much. Um, I promised that this wouldn't be a lecture, it'd be interactive, and obviously it's been a lecture, hasn't it? So I apologize for that. But let's, let's field questions. Well, maybe not let's field questions. Dr. Sieper said, would you spend just two or three minutes maybe clarifying what I, in my obtuse way, confused people about? No, I think you did. Sentence, right? okay. 
No, I think you did an excellent job. Just a couple of things that I was making notes as you were doing. I think I would like to share my screen. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you've disabled. So could you allow me to share, please? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see if I can here for a second. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that. Um, uh, I think you'd go over to the participants. Yeah, yeah. All. Okay. Can you yes, now? I, yes, yes, yes. Ah, Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, the default in uh, Canvas, in Zoom, excuse me, not Canvas, the default in Zoom is only the moderator can share the screen. But that's easily changed. Just going to click and everybody can share. Okay. You Matter guys fact, seeing my screen? I'm sorry. I'll, are you I'll, seeing I'll my myself. screen now? Yeah. Yes, we are. Thank you. Okay, so just a little bit of clarification uh, that Dr. Simonson was saying. Um, from the navigation bar, he did a great job explaining the settings. What I wanted to also, he was mentioning about the grade book. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but you also have an easy way to enter your grades into the gradebook directly from Canvas. Uh, the way that you would do that once you're in your course and you go down to settings, and on the third tab, you go to navigation. I actually disabled it so that I could uh, demo this. There we're is looking, an option. We're looking uh, at uh, your MyNSU Sharkling site. Oops, sorry, hold on, hold on. That means you uh, share the wrong screen. Well, I, hold on. Are you seeing my? No, no uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Another technique, if I could interrupt again. Sure. It, 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 team teaching over Zoom is really a very effective strategy. Uh, you can have maybe a, a student in your class be your uh, collaborator when you're teaching a class, if you're doing the 50 minute lecture approach like I just did. Uh, and, and they then can help you out a little bit if you need some help, just like Dr. Seeper said, is helping me out. Okay, so coming back to the course navigation bar, if you go to settings, on the third tab in the middle of the page on the navigation, if you scroll down, there is an option there that says NSU grades. You can just drag it up to the top half. And of course, the next option is to save it. And this actually works really well when it's time to enter grades. So if you go to NSU grades, during the time that we're allowed to enter our grades directly from this screen, you'll be able to enter your students' grades. Oh, wow. Is everyone seeing that? Cool. Okay. Another thing with the grade book that I'd like to elaborate on is with the new grade book that has been implemented in January, there is an option here. So I don't know if you're like me, when I'm entering my grades, I don't want my students to see it immediately. I want to grade everyone and then post it. By default in Canvas, it published it automatically, but you can control that. And the way that you would do it from your gradebook, you would go over to this little widget in the upper right-hand corner, and you would do the grade, the grade posting policy, and then you choose the option to manually post your grades. If you do that, then your students don't see the grades immediately, or you could also come in here in the individual assignment itself and your grade posting policy, and then you can say when you want your grades to be posted. All right, just a quick tip and just elaborating on the grade book based on what uh, Dr. Simonson was talking about. Also, he talked about the homepage and creating a banner. An additional thing that you can do is to make sure that your announcements, when you do those uh, Monday morning memos, and if you're posting it as an announcement, you could also have it showing up on your homepage. And the way that you would do that also, if you're not already familiar from your Canvas course menu, you would go to settings. And on the course details where he showed you to change the image for your flashcard, 
if you choose uh, more options all the way at the bottom, you're able to show the most recent announcements on the home page. You don't want to clutter it. You just want to have maybe the, the latest three announcements. And those are just good tips for keeping your students informed and uh, being helpful to your students. Okay, just a good way of communicating. Uh, let's see here. He talked about importing as well, importing and exporting. Just want to cover that. Now he did talk about exporting your whole course, but let's say that you are an instructor and you're teaching maybe the same course and you want to use something from a previous course and bring it into your course. Uh, same thing, you can you do a lot of stuff from your course menu. If you go to settings, and over on the right hand side, you would go to import course content. So settings, import course content, your content type, select on the drop down arrow and you will say copy a canvas course. Now, of course, this is on the assumption that you already, that you're still the instructor in the course that you want to copy, okay? You can then look for the course, but importantly, you will say select specific account, uh, specific content. And this means that if you have an assignment or maybe you have a discussion or you have a page or something, so it's not the whole course, you're just going to choose which course it's coming from. You're in the course that is being copied to, and you can select just the specific content. Okay, just a quick tip on that. Uh, let's see here. Great. Someone also uh, talked about how do you record audio and video directly and this you can use it in your announcements, maybe even in your discussions, even in giving feedback to your students from the gradebook. I am, let me choose an old course. One second. Okay, let's say I'm doing uh, I'm going to go maybe uh, an announcement and if I'm creating a new announcement and this of course you know it's in all of your canvas uh, components that you're using. The second option here in your second line of icons if you go to record and upload media It will allow you to either do just a simple audio or do it with your webcam. And I'm not sure if you're seeing this. Yes, are you? Are. Okay, yeah. perfect. And yeah. then you can start recording. And then if you don't like it, you can redo the recording. Okay, and that goes directly into your Canvas area in that announcement. It's a great tool. I've had uh, faculty over at Barry that are using this to give feedback to their students when they're actually grading a paper just audio or video, kind of personalized. So. I have a, a question for you. Sure. But if you do that, if you do that for your recording, you can't edit it. It's just what you do right then. Exactly so. It's a quick and dirty way of just doing that um, normal familiar video that Dr. Larson, I'm Hemi Larson, I'm talking about my old boss, Dr. Simonson said. <laughs> Stop laughing, Kathleen. I can see you. Okay. <laughs> Quick and dirty, right down my alley, though. I like. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's a great way just to, you know, to just be normal and natural. Okay. Let's see here. What else? Um, he also talked about uh, organizing your modules. I just want to get to that for a quick second. I know this was, I mean, he asked me to, um, to expand a little bit. So that's what I was doing. Okay. My notes, as you talked, I'm just trying to share some quick tips. Let's see here. Um, oops, no, it's not. Okay. In your modules, when you create your modules, uh, one way of, um, something we promote over at Barry as well, is to make everything kind of linear and put everything in your modules. So if you create a discussion, you can actually add a shortcut to that discussion in your module, okay? And the way that you would do that is simply from the module, you would come up to your plus sign, 
and you can choose add an assignment or a discussion. So if you have an assignment already created or you have a discussion already created, you just place in a, a, a link to that in your module. So if you want to moderate the learning, moderate the pace of your course, as Dr. Simonson mentioned, is you can do it this way because you would have everything in your module and then you can publish or unpublish or you can set a date as to when you want that uh, module to be released. You also have different parameters in here that you can do with your modules. You could it just again depend on your content you could put a prerequisite that you want them to complete something before they could open that module or you can put in lock until okay so there are lots of options and this is all going towards the uh the way of regulating or should i say moderating the pace of your course all right um one thing to be careful with which i'm noticing now that we have um, everyone is teaching remotely the publish and unpublish if you have a page that is published in your module but your module is not published your students are not going to see it so i know that we're all online instructors here for the most part but you know um one of the things uh that you should always remember which again was mentioned, uh, using your student view. Always, if you're not sure of something and you wanna be sure if your students are actually seeing it, always go back to your student view and check it out. 